All right, everybody, welcome back to episode two of Valkyrie Profile, one of the best RPGs ever fucking made. Um, and uh, okay, so we're back. I saved on the memory card, even though I didn't actually really need to. Uh, we'll do that. And, uh, just make another. <laughs> just make another save state here because I'm, you know, because I'm paranoid, and. Uh, and uh, here we go. Uh, yes. All right. So we're gonna go back and we're gonna resume the second half of this ridiculously long intro cutscene sequence. Um. Um. So anyway, Arngrim's got the princess because she passed out and uh, she rolled over and her little bonnet fell off and now it's obvious that it, she's the princess as if, as if it wasn't already. And uh, Argon's like, oh, what? Uh, princess Jelana? Princess Je Jelanda. J -j -jeland Jelanda. Is it Jelanda or, Jel or Jelanda? It's such a weird name, and it always makes me think of Jello. Like, it just seems... I don't know. And then, of course, Arngrim. See, Arngrim actually seemed... Arngrim actually sounds like it could be a Northern European name. I'm actually not 100% sure. Hopefully none of my... Seating adjustment sounds are coming through um trying to be as delicate with them as possible and uh post is going to be much cleaner now using adobe premiere but you know so basically we've got this thing going on where i love how the text still refers to her as angela as angela um excuse me uh so Talking in her sleep. Duh. Foul Oathbreaker. 10,000 deaths are not enough for you. So that's it. I understand now. I won't explain it because this will do it. Of course, I didn't mean to. Kind of did. I just wanted to show what a gutless coward the king is. You meant to insult the king, just didn't mean to do it in front of the princess. What I did wasn't wrong. Well, can't speak for all little girls there, I don't think. Well, if their sire's an asshole. But, yeah. Kind of getting where they're coming from there. So the interesting thing here is that you're seeing that Arngrim isn't a complete asshole. Like, he's able to relate. So even though he's brutish... There's an intelligent side to him. And most of the characters in this game, and there's a, there's a good chunk of characters. There's like 20, 30 something characters, recruitable characters, something like that. They are all developed just right. Like, they're not overdeveloped, but they're developed enough that you see that they're interesting and they have redeeming qualities but they also have flaws like all the characters are very much human like it's there's no mary sues here and there's also no like obvious villains anyway so arngrim's playing dumb he's like yeah come back tomorrow
some sort of revenge for what I did to her father. See? Like, what a stand-up dude. Like, in the beginning of this, you know, we all thought he was a dickhead. That kind of came out weird. Dick-ed. Dickhead. Bad wreck. I think that's how you pronounce his name. You know, looking at him right now, uh, in the face a little bit, kind of reminds me of uh, a little bit uglier version of... Uh... Oh man, what's his name? Norman Reedus. So he's another mercenary, and uh, the agent that uh, was talking about the job uh, basically hmm. these Asians look so like weird. They look like they don't look like Asians. They look like little school children that just happen to be wearing like black hoods. Anyway, this part seems kind of random, but it's going to tie in together soon. Again, I know this is long. People have short attention spans lately. This game is like 15, 20 years old. Attaboy, bootlicker. Um, this is, this is by far the longest one. They're all significantly shorter than this. So uh, don't worry too much. This isn't coming, is she? Probably not. But if you think about the princess being out of the castle... Yeah, I suppose. If she keeps sneaking out, she's going to get her attendants executed. Uh, yeah. <laughs> hey. You know. We're, we're talking. We're talking. We're brothers. You know, we can one word each other and we get it. Uh, yeah, so there's not really much else to do there. So if you haven't picked up on it yet, this is a side scrolling RPG. Um, not really the kind of top down or full 3D thing like you would expect from, uh, you know, like uh, Final Fantasy VII, which I think, I think this game came out um, in between Final Fantasy VII and Final Fantasy VIII, because there's another cult classic RPG that I also re really want to play and will be equally excited for, and that's Legend of Lagaya. And I think I get them mixed up in terms of chronology, but Legend of Lagaya I think came out after Final Fantasy VIII. And then this came out, I think, before it. Not 100% sure on that. Um, there's also... Where, where, where's the... Where's the shit? Where are we going? Maybe here? Wait, no, no that just goes... Okay, yeah. It's kind of... The layout of some of the towns is kind of confusing. I wonder what lilac means in the language of flowers. Bah. Who cares about flowers, anyway? <laughs> what a douche. Uh, you know, your your girl there might care about some flowers. Maybe you should buy her one. Ch 
definitely I'm definitely not meeting the mercenaries in the chapel. I can tell you that much right now. These towns don't have maps or anything like that, so you're you rely strictly on your you know sort of Oh, you know what I think happens? You go That's right. I remember being confused by this before. Yeah, you have to go outside and run around and then give up and come back to your house. And it's like, oh, hey, you have a visitor. And so this agent lady bitch shows up instead of uh, Angela slash Delanda. And uh, yeah, it must be it must be Delanda. Otherwise, she wouldn't have come up with Angela. I need to speak with you. I'm assuming this is an agent that Arngram's worked with before. That's always kind of been my assumption. Is this about a job? Yeah. Did you take it? I leave tomorrow morning. You'll be alone again for a few days. What about the princess? Cancelled, probably. <laughs> See, now they're so laissez-faire about everything. It's like, oh, whatever. I guess she cancelled. And so, this guy's partner is me. And as you can see by his face, he's not the... Not the... Not the fastest crack of a whip. <laughs> Arngrim is... Arngrim can kind of channel Squall sometimes, only he's a lot less emo. I shouldn't say that. I don't really think Squall was emo. He was just kind of... I mean, he kind of was, but kind of not. I don't know. Name's Badrack. Nice to meet Arngrim. I've heard all about you. If you must engage in such meaningless blather, do it on the road. Cargo must be delivered. <laughs> so important. Yes, ma'am. Do it. Do it now. It was about a week's journey away along the great road. But the journey was uneventful, and by the third day we were halfway there. Was that cursor there the whole time? I am so sorry, guys. That's bad. Hold on. <laughs> fucking the fucking horses, you know, horseshoe steps. They're very. It was a nice beat there. I was feeling it. Hey, bodyguard, something's coming up behind you. Oh, no. What? So this, this dumbass thinks I'm his bodyguard? What are you, a, a knights? Lots of them. Knights? Okay. The dust looked to have been kicked up by a group of Altorian cavalry. It seemed like they were chasing something, but I never imagined it was us. Um, obviously the voice actor of Arngrim is also from Pokemon. Um, all of the voice actors in this game acted for characters on Pokemon. The, the original series, like the first, second, and I think third seasons, like, is that, is the Kanto, like Pokemon Red and Blue, the whole Kanto storyline that was split and that was like one long, like dual season. And then there was another season after that was the Orange Islands that had, I think, the same voice actors. And I can't remember which ones, if any, changed for Johto, but... All those voice actors, same team of voice actors in this game. Um, so you'll recognize voices. And I recognize Arngrim's. The only character that I can remember from Pokemon uh, that I recognize that voice from is uh, Bruno from the Elite Four. Like the fighting slash rock type dude. When I think about it 
now. I never should have agreed to take that package without knowing what was inside. It just wasn't like me. These are the ones, oh my god. See so yeah, how the soldiers are apparently, you know, apparently they didn't check their cargo before they went off with it. They just knew it was dangerous and, you know, but apparently it's a, uh, it's a wanted. Our group's like, let's get out of here. Okay, so they take off and then Badrack's like, oh no, wait, I want to see. Because he's a dumbass. Look at his sprite. His sprite is like, huh? Got a constant look on his face, like, Meh. I shouldn't knock the sprites. The sprites aren't bad at all. Um, you know, for this time period. Our parcel? It was that little tomboy princess. I don't know if I'd call her a tomboy. Jalanda. I mean, she's certainly assertive and aggressive. Kind of has a temper. She's fiery. I wouldn't. That doesn't constitute tomboy to me, but whatever. Looks like we'll have to wait till night and run. <laughs> that damn Lombard, he totally screwed this. Me, me, me. You filthy. You knew! Yeah. So Lombert, that guy, he, the princess's sort of caretaker. Yeah, the the client for the mercenary job was uh was Lombert and Yeah. Yeah, so Arngrim's finding out all this crazy shit. What? Wait, so he knew... This, this dialogue exchange always kind of confused me. Never could quite tell. I've been quite happy to kill a stinking knave, but I've got more important things to do. Ah, oh, Arngrim! It hurts! Help me! Save me! Jolanda is misty, I'm fairly sure. I'm fairly certain. Anyway. Ah, I don't know. What are we going to do? So yeah, I never could tell from that dialogue exchange whether he knew or didn't know that the princess was in there. Because first he was like, I didn't know what was in the thing. And then later he's like, yeah, and if Filnor got their hands on the princess, that would be, you know, would have, you know, created chaos that people could have taken advantage of somehow whatever political blah 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 knight help uh, help us i love how the knight's just like standing there and it's like okay so like if you look at his sprite carefully you can tell that he's got both his arms by his side but because of like the elbow part of his armor if you look at it a certain way it kind of looks like he's standing with one hand on his hip with his pelvis kind of cocked to the side like uh, uh uh no you didn't like you know looking very sassy um uh because the princess was unconscious <laughs> the captain told us to give her this medicine that he got from lombra oh oh no so yeah now now you see uh oh isn't that the princess
He knew the abduction would be discovered, so he sent some medicine along with the search party. If we made it all the way to Vilnor, no problem. But if we were discovered, the cavalry would use the medicine. He knew the princess would be unconscious if she was found. The medicine's effect was as you see. Damn. The princess became a monster, and afterwards all were dead. Ah, God, that's gnarly. Perhaps even the princess. Oh, man. Getting real dark already. Um, so without spoiling too much, Arngrim is, there's a reason we're getting him, he's one of the first characters we're getting, he's actually kind of important, but, um, again, goes some way towards explaining the length of this cutscene, is because, you know, not only is it the introduction of the game, but it's the recruitment of two characters and, um, establishing their, uh, Arngrim's really personality and his uh, you know his his character you know Lombard is a necromancer gotta love this game I love this game Angela oh Angela you mean Joy <laughs> God what are you talking about Time we get back to Artolia. I'm getting out of here. See ya. <laughs> what a dick. He made the right choice. I don't know. But I wasn't going to run. Hell yeah. Even on the field of battle, I never felt like this. Lombert! I'm going to kill you. What will become of Jolanda? Banana! Stop! That's... <gasps> Human. Life is not something to be thrown away. You're a true warrior, you will find your path in the Maelstrom battle. Some of this is gonna feel weird later, in terms of the way Valkyrie talks, but... Battle made in Valkyrie. Battle of fucking waits us. You hear that? Anyway, so we got Valkyrie, we got Freya, we got Arngrim, we're gonna kick some ass. So another awesome thing about the this game. So you see the face buttons up there, triangle square X. Each character is devoted, each character has their own button dedicated to them. And you literally just like it's like your entire party is one character, like one unit that you control and you just do combos with them almost but like instead of combos being you know moves or swings of your weapon or spells for like a single character it's like the characters themselves are your individual moves like it's it's really cool but like basically uh there's the enemy's turn and there's your turn but the characters don't have individual turns they have a set number of actions and, um, yeah, what? Come on, game. Ah, okay. I guess I, I guess I sat there and waited too long. Emulator got mad at me. Um, but yeah, everyone can attack at the same time. So that lets you do just absolutely batshit crazy stuff. Like just, yeah, just like everyone just hammers on them at the same time. And it's pretty tame right now. 
but like once you start getting better weapons, uh, get full attacks, because every every character has every character that isn't a mage has up to three different moves that they can chain together, in addition to chaining all their moves with everybody else's moves. And um, you make combos that way, and you build up a combo gauge. You can block. You can uh, take down the enemy's guard. You can block. You can dodge. You can counter. And uh, when you build it, when when all of your characters combo hard enough, pretty much, you get to do like a multi-chain like limit break. And uh, yeah, it's pretty sweet. I love the combat system in this game. It was through others' misfortune that I felt myself to be strong. That's right. I, who was myself without morals, who was I to judge others? Who was I to look down on them in justice? Damn. I began to realize that the king and I were very much the same. Oh, princess is dead. It's, yeah, pretty sad. Thought you might show up sooner or later. You really should have just run away. The value of nothing to cause a disturbance here, young man. I'll sure as hell avail me to smash your face in. <laughs> oh man, I don't remember that line. I mean, you may be a genius in the battlefield, but when it comes to the hierarchy, you know little. You realize you were already dead. Suddenly he turns all evil and he 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 magic iron grim he he he. Let me show you he he he. Okay, Misty. Sorry. How do you think he might be saved? By accepting Jesus Christ. I don't know. By being allowed to continue to live, or by being chosen by me? Something that strike me as odd. I believe that if you ran away, but could a human really have defeated a ghoul? Can't imagine. That's him! That's the man who betrayed me! Yeah, you can really hear the Misty there when she gets indignant. What? Me? Ah, now I understand. We have a little conspiracy here, don't we? Conspiracy, ha, huh? I hear the expert on that subject, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Defile their souls, sins they heavy upon you. Moralistic pontificating. Valkyrie does kind of... There's sometimes early in the game where she can grate on you a little bit just because of how self-righteous she can be. But, I mean, she does kind of... She does kind of have a... She does kind of have a... Uh, I don't know what you'd call it. Okay, that's getting annoying. It seems to, like, like it'll hang up for a second, and then you press buttons, it, it gets past it. Maybe it just, like, the animations. After this episode, there's a dungeon. 
and uh, I'll make a save state when I go in there and, and do some testing and see if I can't get that cleared up. Prepare yourself, rebel scum. What are you guys, stormtroopers? <laughs> Slipshot soldiers think they can call me rebel scum? Yeah, meh. Jesus. Look, friend, don't expect me to do you any favors. I'm not going to die. <laughs> Guess they don't have... Ooh, that's big talk. <laughs> hmm. You're the one to talk death goddess. Wow. So watch this right here. Check this out. Talking, talking. Hmm, you're the one to talk, death goddess. Imputed fool, Valkyrie is not a goddess of the dark. Such words will result in your certain death. Totally. It's a very... Yeah. Uh, Angela? <gasps> oh, look how big his eyes get. Eh? You... You knew? Watch carefully. Hehehe. <laughs> I see. So you're safe, little one. I mean, kind of. She's dead. <laughs> Literally just... <laughs> just watching that. It's like, they're in the middle of a conversation. He's like, hey, hey, all right, so it seems you're all right, little one. And he's like, oh, wait, hold on a second. <laughs> dead. I have one question. I'm sorry, I just, I love that. Aren't you just the Death Goddess? God of Death is merely responsible for the snuffing out of lives. I, however, can show you the path. Again, not really a Valkyrie thing, but, you know. They'd already be on the path when they died. Valkyrie would just come pick them up and take them to Valhalla. They wouldn't snuff out their lives. They still weren't death entities. They just kind of helped you find your way, really. Stop this pointless slaughter. Old man? Night Captain. Arngrim, will you truly raise arms against me? Here he goes. Why did you save me? <sighs> Consider it a gift. It seems we'll be spending quite a bit of time together. That it does, little one. Quite a bit indeed. So when they die, it's sad, but like, there's always like this kind of strange moment of like humanization, redemption, uh, you know, uh, this is just a really cool game and it's really unique. I've never played another game like it. Uh, Freya is pontificating to herself in her brain and Valkyrie is like, what are you talking about? I can hear your thoughts somehow. Not really, but you know. I see a dialogue box hovering above your head, but it's censored. I can't read it. Uh, nothing. Let's take leave of here. <laughs> Valkyrie's like, okay, what's next, boss? Yes. Even the strongest steel must first be tempered, yes? To send them to Asgard directly would only be a death sentence. Also, not really a thing, but... They would... They'd already be tempered. They died in battle. They'd go up, you know... There was no, like, Valkyries didn't train the human Pokemon before sending them to Asgard. 
comes great once again. You should be able to feel the presence of the undead as well. So here, you press start, and you do spiritual concentration again, and then you hear distinctly different music. And after a while, it'll pop up and it'll show you the location of a dungeon. Every chapter, uh, you know, you'll get like <sighs> every chapter you get like two to three dungeons and two to three new characters. It's pretty much how it works. There's eight chapters. I feel them there nearby. Let us go and see. All right, so we have control of the menu now, and I just realized that this game. Wait. Oh, okay, never mind. I was like, wait, do I need to use the analog stick? And then I remembered that there's like specifically a forward and backward button. And uh, actually, I don't think I have the backward button configured. Okay, never mind. So you have like a. You can hover around like this, like a UFO, or you can, you know, sort of more like fly, you know? Um, but yeah, interesting that you have this game where it's like instantly you have access to the full world map, but you don't really. Um, this is, we're still considered in the prologue right now. Um, but, um,. Yeah, so this is the world map. Um, I'll kind of go over it a little bit later. Um, there's not really anything we can do right now because we're still kind of considered in an introductory phase. Like, I can't even get into the menu. Um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and go into the dungeon just because at that point we will have more full control. Our Tolian Mountain Ruins. Lie in the northern hills, massive stoneworks have eroded over the years, and their hulking forms peer eerily out from a deep, deep blanket of fog. Bonfire now burns there, and an eerie screaming sound can be heard each night. It's cool, they have like a little, little bit of like, cursory bit of like, backlog information about like every location. And uh, the dungeon ones are always really interesting to read. But the world in general is fucked. Like when we, once we get access to all the towns, we'll be able to see that like everything is just shitty. I sense an enemy. Yeah, that's gonna happen. Yes, there is one, an undead. Leneth, are you ready? I can accompany you through this ruin, but when you leave this place, I must return to Asgard. So, um, you know, Freya's a beast, so it wouldn't really be, you know, it'd be kind of cheap to have her through the whole game. So she's really just accompanying us now to see us through, make sure we get our feet wet properly. And, uh, you know, so this first dungeon is more or less training. Um, don't worry, there's not going to be lengthy tutorials. This is still, you know, this game is, this game predates the millennium. It's back in the day when they didn't have two-hour tutorials for opening the menu. Uh, eating souls is a desecration of the dead, and having mercy on the undead is useless. Is that what was said? I actually don't know. Damn it. Hold on. Where's the music? Okay, there's the music. Fight the enemy, face the enemy, and brandish a sword. Any contact means fight, but you never know who will be first. Brandish sword, X button. <gasps> Fantasticinating. Fantastinating. Fan then fascinating. Um Yeah, I'll kinda go over some of that stuff later. Um for now, now that I've got control of Valkyrie, um first thing I'm gonna do is do a little do a little save here. And, uh, do a little save here. And, uh, um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and cut it here. And I'll see you guys in the next episode. In between cuts, I'm going to get into a, get into a battle and then revert back to my save state. And, uh, hopefully when I do that, I can figure out what's going on with the battle animations and such. It's kind of weird. But, uh, yeah. 
I'll see you guys next time. Uh, take care and uh, stay tuned. This game only gets better and it's amazing and uh, you're going to love it. All right, later.